insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 55, Peer Acceptance. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and insightful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing fine. Slightly freaked out by that stink bug on the wall over there? Did you have to mention that? (laughs) Didn't have to, no. It was just an added bonus. Awesome. So today we are talking about peer acceptance. What is peer acceptance? Well, peer acceptance is the degree to which a child or adolescent is socially accepted by peers. It includes the level of peer popularity and the ease with which a child or adolescent can initiate and maintain satisfactory peer relationships. Oh, great. This sounds sort of similar to school drama. Wonderful. Well... I think peer acceptance contributes to school drama, for sure. Yep. So this definition comes from healthofchildren.com, and most of the notes that we're going to be working off of today uh, come from the same origin. So a couple of things we're going to look at. We're going to look at what the importance of peer acceptance means to kids. We're going to look at what affects peer acceptance uh, what affects peer acceptance with teens. Uh, Hopefully by the end of the show, I'll actually learn how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, And then we'll look at uh, your closing remarks and shout outs. All right, it's still pretty short today. So it's it's a fairly short one, but I think it's an important topic. And I think we kind of have to address this in order to support some of the topics that are coming up that we want to talk about. So it's kind of a foundation we're laying down here for some, some later topics. All righty. Uh, Ready to get into it? Sure. Okay, don't worry about the stink bug. He doesn't eat much. So the importance of peer acceptance. So peer acceptance and relationships are important to social and emotional development. Would you agree with that? Um, yes, I would definitely agree with that. Peer acceptance is basically how you can find who your friends are, um, but they also can have some negative impacts, but I guess we're just focusing on the positives as- positive aspects right now. So let me ask you, um, do you think you are successful with peer acceptance? Are you happy with the level of peer acceptance that you have right now? Yeah, for my own personal benefit, yes, I'm fine with the peer acceptance. I definitely know other kids have higher levels, but honestly, this level is perfectly fine for me. So, okay, so... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this one can fly. So, they they can all fly, sweetie. It's okay. Uh, We'll do a uh, episode on uh, stink bugs next week, I think. No, we won't. Um, (laughs) Peer acceptance and friendship provide a wide range of learning and development opportunities for peers. And these include um, companionship, recreation, building social skills, participating in group problem solving, managing competition and conflict, self-exploration, emotional growth, and moral and ethical development. Do you find that you get... Any, all, some, or none of those benefits from your peers? I definitely know I get most of those benefits, and some of them come from group projects. Others just come from hanging out with some friends. So you were hanging out with friends today, weren't you? Yep. 
And this was more recreational than anything else, right? Yeah. So do you, let's talk, and we'll go down the list real quick. So companionship. Do you get companionship? Yes, I do. Um, whenever I hang out with my friends or just sit with my one friend at lunch, um, we normally talk and discuss about what's been going on, and then we discuss about other like crazy stuff that's going on, and then um, um, I definitely feel some companionship from it. Okay. Obviously, recreation, you, you experienced that today. How about building social skills? Um, sometimes. I mean, I have younger friends, and um, having to talk with them helps me build um, a way on how to talk to younger people because I definitely think I can, like, whenever they have a small problem, I'm able to um, comprehend the problem and hopefully find a solution for them. And then, um, basically, I'm able, and I've done that over time and now if someone younger than me is struggling with something I can always help them out and even someone my age or even someone maybe even older when they're struggling with a problem I understand I can try and help them that's a very good point peer acceptance is a two-way street so so your peers benefiting from uh, the relationship with you works just as well as you benefiting from others and you make a very good point in that in dealing with um you know, friends that are younger than you, it gives you experience in problem solving for them and, and how you might be able to help others your own age cope with it. Yeah. Um, let's talk problem solving. How about participating in group problem solving? Do you, can you give an example of that? Uh, that's normally when we um, are in projects and we figure out well, group projects, and we're like, okay, who does what? And whenever, like, one of us um, is having a problem looking something up or figuring out how to word something, one of um, our group members will work on it with them. Okay. That's a, that's a good example. Uh, the next one here is one that I know you've encountered a lot, and, and we've talked about how uh, the boys in your, your school tend to be very competitive, but have you found your peer engagements helping you to manage competition and conflict? Um, well, let me just say, two of my f younger friends who I hang out with don't always get along. Um, they are constantly sort of arguing and, like, play fighting, basically. So I normally have to stop it and calm them down. Um, and basically, um, the way I can cope I've learned how to cope with it by just stepping back, taking a breather, and trying to handle the situation in any way I can by either calming the um two the two um the two my two peers down, or just letting them settle it out and wait till they cool off. Okay, that's that's certainly a good example. Self exploration. Now, when they sell, say self exploration, what they're talking about here is do you learn more about yourself by interacting with other people? Maybe you see a reflection of yourself in others. Maybe you learn to have patience with others. Is there a, is there a benefit that you yourself are getting or learning about yourself through your peer interactions? Yeah, like whenever I hang out with my friends, um, I can learn how I can react in certain situations. Like if... Um, they're having troubles in having trouble in school or having trouble with their like with other with some of their other friends or some of their classmates i um have found out and learned that um i myself am able to comprehend um certain solutions for um certain problems good that's good uh, let's talk a brief moment about emotional growth do you find that you're able to grow and mature emotionally through your relationships with your other peers? I mean, definitely with my younger friends, I've definitely grown to maturity because I'm basically the oldest one and I have to be the one who stops them from um, doing stupid stuff, basically. So um, you're kind of in that leadership role there just by dint of being older. Yeah, um, and I've definitely learned how to be a bit more mature, like... Um, whenever my friends had trouble with homework when I used to go to school with them, I would always, um, try to 
help them by explaining it to them, but in a way that they can actually understand it, and they also try to make it a bit fun since they're younger than I am and really don't like listening to a lecture. Uh, well, yeah, I could certainly see that. And the last point that they make here is moral and ethical development. Um, so do you find that in dealing with your peers, you seem to be developing your sense of right and wrong and, and know better, you know, either. And, you know, the thing is that, that your peers can serve as both good examples and bad examples. So if you have a, you know, a friend of yours who's always doing something bad, you can learn from their mistakes, right? Yeah. Do you find that you're benefiting morally and ethically from your peers? Um, yeah. Uh, whenever I, um, am, um, uh, I don't have a specific example of this, but I definitely can benefit off of doing what, learning what my friend, seeing um, how my friends act and seeing whether it's right or wrong. And that's how I basically figure out the best solution in order to stop them from play fighting or, you know, getting hurt. Okay. So the article goes on to say that parents, teachers, and other adults are a good source of social support for children but it is among other children that kids learn how to interact with each other. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, like, throughout your life, you're basically going to be around many different people. But most of those people are probably going to be those who are similar in age to you. Like, you're not going to just interact with um, your parent when you're, like, nine. You're not always going to interact with just your parents and teachers, you're also going to interact with children who are um, slightly older or younger and maybe even the same age as you. That's a very good point. So we'll come back and we'll talk about what affects peer acceptance on teens. <laughs> So as you might imagine, you know, when we, when we first started talking about this and associating this with, uh, school drama and stuff, the popularity factor comes into play with peer acceptance. Mm -hmm. So one of the factors they talk about here is factors such as physical attractiveness, cultural traits, and disabilities greatly affect the level of peer acceptance with a child's degree of social competence being the best predictor of peer acceptance. Have you found um, these factors themselves, whether you're attractive or you are have cultural traits that the norm, you know, the, the majority of kids um, don't share, uh, or do you see other kids that are kind of ostracized and shunned and not, part of the in crowd as part of, as a result of these things, um, or kids with disabilities, do you see them being excluded from a peer accepted group of people? Um, well, I can definitely say that my one friend, um, in the beginning of school didn't have a good time because people were misusing, um, their pronouns and were making fun of them. Um, but um, and but they did have a good support system of people who um, would support them, and eventually I joined in on that. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, the article goes on to say the peer groups of adolescents, especially teens, are often based on athletic, social, or academic interests and abilities, on distinctions of race, ethnicity, and social class and on proclivities such as drug use and delinquency. So what they're saying here is certain groups of people tend to congregate together, tend to flock together. So you'll have all the athletes and the jocks, you know, they're the, they're the ones that are in one crowd and yeah. all the smart kids are in another. And then all the, the outcast kids, the, we, they used to be the smoking crowd, you know, they're in another one. Do you see uh, cliques like this forming in school yet uh, where certain groups of people tend to, to congregate together and, and you're getting separation of these groups? Honestly, yeah. I mainly see it with the girls who um, are pretty loud and outgoing. They seem to be together and all the quiet girls seem to be together. Um, I've honestly never thought that I was in any relation to my friends because... Um, 
most of my friends are not the int I'm not trying to be rude, but most of my friends um are not as similar to me. Um like academically speaking. I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. No, no, and that's fine. You know, academically speaking, I, I think you because you bring home straight A's, you probably are in a different category that way, but the fact that you still associate with the friends that you have who are not overachievers academically, I think, uh, kind of flies in the face of what some of these observations are. Yeah, but we, we also, um, I also encounter, I have a group of younger friends who are my neighbors, coincidentally, and, um, um, we hang out like that. Honestly, there's not really many factors that bring us together. Um, there's only really a few things that bring us together, like the fact that we are all fans of certain things. That's, But, like, um, honestly, we have all different personalities, but um, we're, we all ended up still being friends, and that's still a possibility. Like, you can have, like, groups of people who like have pretty much similar personalities but then you can have like a group of people who just have completely different personalities completely different backstories and basically yeah. just for some reason they're just like mix well together yeah and that's that's good to see and i was one of those kids you know growing up through school you know i was a, the type of person who i kind of got along with everybody you know it, it was you know, the, the athletes, I could hang out with those guys or, you know, the, I was in honor society, so I could hang out with the, the smart kids. And I even got along with a couple of the, you know, what we would have called at the time delinquents at the time, because there were certain hobbies that, that we had, you know, a couple of the delinquents that we had were computer guys that, you know, I kind of got along with them for that. So I... I never really fell in with a, any one particular crowd. I just, you know, I kind of rose above all of that stuff and was able to get along with everybody, which I'll tell you later in life, it, it helps to be able to do that, especially when you're in a diver in a company with a diverse set of departments where you can actually interact with different departments and do it in a cooperative way. Yeah, honestly, that's... Um kind of what I feel. I mean, I don't get along with everyone. I probably don't fit well with the athletes. I mean, overall, most people, most of my friends can say I have a pretty good personality. I'm not like, I honestly don't have one kind of personality. I can be smart. I'm caring. Um, I can also be a bit wild at times and crazy. But Wild you, and crazy. Okay. Yeah, you can sometimes see that. I can also be weird. I honestly have so many different personality traits, I can fit on with almost everyone. You're a very complex person. Cool. So the article goes on to say that teens who are peer accepted or popular have fewer problems in middle and high school, and teens who are peer accepted have fewer emotional and social adjustment problems as adults. Now, I'm sure you're aware of, even though you might not associate with them, I'm sure you're aware of some kids in school who probably aren't as peer accepted as you are or some of the other kids. Mm -hmm. um, do the kids that are like that, do you see them having any kind of uh, emotional or social problems or run-ins with teachers or discipline problems or any anything along those lines? Um... Well, um, I'm not completely sure of this, but there is this one girl I've sort of mentioned about on the podcast, never said her name before, um, but she seems to qualify for some of those traits because she will actively try to talk to people. Um, she also doesn't have the best behavior because I've heard she's gotten restricted multiple times. Okay. Um, and detentions. Um, so... I think she's not as pure accepted, even though, like, the people she talks to, like, they completely talk to her. Also, I've heard some people do call her annoying, and uh, she kind of is. Like, okay. uh, I have to be kind of honest there. So one of the other things that they do go on to say is that pure accepted teens may either be shy or assertive, but they often have well-developed communication skills. 
Now, we've described you as peer accepted in the podcast so far. Do you feel you have well-developed communication skills? In a sense, yes. I can um, start a... Well, I can... I talk a lot in conversations, but I don't know why I can't start conversations. I just have this fear that I might be annoying someone if I started, and unless they talk to me, um, I won't talk to them. I mean, except for my friends. That's the only occasion. I can only talk to my parents, um, teachers, and friends um, without... And the millions of people who listen and watch the podcast on a weekly basis... I'm pretty sure it's on a million, but... No, but, you know, good advertising. Yeah, sure. So the uh, the article goes on to talk about... They characterize some, some functions that these peer-accepted teens tend to be more adept at. I want to throw these at you one at a time and see what your reaction is. So the first one they say is that peer-accepted children... Uh, correctly interpret other children's body language and tone of voice. Well-liked children can distinguish subtleties in emotion. For example, they can distinguish between anger directed toward them and anger directed toward a parent. Do you feel you're able to read people's body language and tone of voice? Yeah, pretty much. Like, whenever I can, like, I can, like, when I, my one friend, um, when we would go to school, she never had a good time in it, and... Whenever she, I could just like tell from her facial expression and just her movements that she had a bad day. And once we talk about it, she feels better. I don't know why. I just have that superpower on seeing if my friends are down. Same with you guys. Like I, when I can tell you're angry about something, I can tell when mommy's a bit sad. I don't know why, but I can just tell when people aren't feeling good and I try to um, make them feel better. Okay, that's a good point. The article also says that peer-accepted children uh, directly respond to the statements and gestures of other children. Well-liked children will say other children's names, establish eye contact, and use touch to get attention. And these are all communication skills that you tend to learn later in life when you're doing interviews or if you're working in any kind of customer-facing position when you communicate with someone, you learn to use their names. And, you know, when you're talking to them or they're talking to you, establish eye contact. It makes you more engaging. Do you find that you tend to do that as well? Yeah, I mean, I know all my friends' names. Um, well, that's helpful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've actually seen that I can only really do eye contact with the people I've known more. Like, whenever another student tries to talk to me who I don't know that well, like, even, like, the teachers on the first day of class, like, I just couldn't do eye contact with them, and I just felt, like, weirded out. Like, one time when we were in ELA, my one teacher was, like, staring at me, and I was, like, I had no idea what the heck was going on. And, like, I just got nervous. I thought I did something wrong. And eventually, after, like, a minute, she looked away. And I'm just like, what the heck was that? You were that? like, hey, you blink first. I win. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just, I still wonder why she did that. I don't know if she was looking directly at me or at the board behind me. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I can't stand eye contact with people who I don't know that well. Like, I'm, do I, I'm literally looking at your eyes right now. And I don't feel weird no, at not. all. Really? I honestly don't feel weird whenever I look at my friends, um, my parents, and even some of my teachers. Okay. But people I don't know, I can't do eye contact with. So peer-accepted teens uh, often give reasons for their own statements, gestures, and actions. For example, well-liked children will explain why they want to do something uh, the other child does not want to do. So if you're... Uh, hanging out with a friend of yours and you want to uh, go have a catch and they want to go play video games. Uh, a well-liked child, and, and it's, almost, it's almost as though they learn the art of manipulation, of human manipulation yeah. by giving a sales pitch as to why you should do what I want to do. Um, do, you, do you find yourself doing those things? Um... 
I mean, sometimes I give reasoning on, like, funny stuff to do with my friends. Um, and also, like, sometimes whenever we're talking about problems, I give them reasoning on, like, an action that they could take. But, yeah. So, yeah, I've kind of done that. I don't do it very often. Okay. I only do it with, like, certain situations. So the last one that they have here is that, uh, peer accepted teens cooperate with, show tact towards, and compromise with other children, demonstrating the willingness to subordinate the, themselves by modifying behavior and opinions in interest of others. So what they're saying here is, if you have a couple of your friends and they all want to do something different than you do, um, you'll cooperate you'll do what the group wants to do for the greater good of the group instead of just being selfish is that something that you tend to do yeah i never like being selfish um whenever anyone else in the group just wants to do something and i don't really want to do it or don't understand how to do it i'll agree with it just so that um they honestly don't feel bad and think i'm a uh, i'm a mean person okay well that's a very good point so they also give characteristics, contrasting characteristics, of uh, children that are less peer accepted, or they, in this case here, they say rejected, but I think that's a little strong. Um, so I want you, for the next couple of items here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the list here, and I want you to hold your thoughts for a moment. Think of the kids that you think are not peer accepted, and then see if these apply to them. Uh, they tend to be aggressive, antisocial, withdrawn, exhibit depressive behavior. They don't listen well. They tend not to offer reasons for their behavior. They don't positively, positively reinforce their peers. They have trouble cooperating. They interrupt people. They dominate other children. And they either verbally or physically attack them. Do you f see any of those qualities in the kids that you know that are not peer accepted? Going back to the one girl I was talking about, I think about half of those kind of contribute to her. Mainly um, the ones about interrupting and showing na um, not showing positive um, emotions toward their peers. Um, Basically, a few of the things like, um, uh, let's see, doesn't cooperate very well. That's one. Right. Um, doesn't listen. Um, yep. Because one of the, I'll tell you, one of the other things that this list is indicative of is a lot of these can be attributed to bullies. Mm. They're aggressive. They're antisocial. Um, they dominate other children. Uh, so I think it might be uh, accurate to say that children who are not peer accepted can often become bullies. Yeah. Uh, so that's another conclusion to that. Because, and you think about it, there's a certain logic to it. So if the if the popular groups out there aren't accepting of you, you'll make your own group and you'll do that through bullying other people to be part of your group because. If you make them afraid of you, um, you can control them and, and basically produce the group that you want for yourself. And this can also end up turning not being good for themselves as well, making them think that humanity doesn't accept them, causing other problems. Absolutely. I'm not going to go into detail. Well, and it's funny that you say that because there's a couple of... of effects that this has in this study here, they say that depressive or withdrawn children may be excessively reserved, meaning they're not outgoing at all, so they can't even hold a conversation. And if you can't hold a conversation in school, you're not going to function very well when you get out in the real world. Yeah. They could be submissive, so they lack the ability to stick up for themselves. They could be anxious, and they could be inhibited you know, in, in how they conduct themselves. Yeah. So you're right that if, you know, society in general, if we 
if we exclude people because of how they look or culturally, you know, what their religion is, what their, their ethnicity is, if we're excluding these people, we're, we're part of the problem at that point. Yeah. You know, as a society, we have to be a little bit more inclusive. Um, and there are people out there who have a difficult time socializing. Yeah. And we have to keep that in mind too. And I think you, know, you don't necessarily have to coddle everyone, but sometimes you see someone needs a little bit of help. You know, yep. it's, it's human nature to want to help people. Yep. Um, and ultimately in the long run, we benefit from helping other people. And the people that we help benefit from it also, and society in general does. So that was really all I wanted to talk about today with peer acceptance. Uh, we'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks and any shout outs that you might have. Go with your closing remarks. Alrighty. Sorry. That's okay. You can Hulk smash all you want. Seriously. Alrighty, so peer acceptance, hopefully something we can all experience. Um, peer acceptance can have a big impact on our personality and how we interact with others. Peer acceptance basically is something that we are all going to need, um, especially in the real world. You learned it in school, you gained it in school, and hopefully in the real, real world it will help you in the long run. Okay. That was short and sweet. Exactly. Uh, any shout-outs today? I'm just going to give a shout-out to everyone who's accepted me for who I am, uh, mainly my friends, family, and my teachers. I thank you all, um, and I'm definitely glad I haven't been neglected. Okay, very good. Well, that was all we had for today. Uh, before we go, we'll give you some uh, contact information. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Any comments, suggestions on the show, feedback, uh, anything like that, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. You can get all of our video podcasts at www.youtube.com slash insightsintothings. You can get our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And you can hit us up on Twitter at insights underscore things. Um, and you, this is your part. And you can also get us on Twitch. Oh, right. Uh, Twitch, because I'm assuming everyone's watching it right now, but you're not going to be. So it's twitch.tv slash insights into things. Um, and then you can find our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and Sam. Also, did you mention about our website? I did mention the website. Yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't think you did. Or I ran through all that real fast. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. Yep. We're done. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.